Greetings, class, and welcome to week 12. Last week, we began talking about the dystopia, and this week we're going to continue because the dystopia is such a fun topic that I figured it takes at least two weeks to cover it. So this week, we're going to look at a slightly different type of dystopia. So last week, we had an icy wasteland that the train was racing across, trying to keep everyone on it alive. This week, we're going to take a look at a dystopia that doesn't look like a wasteland. So what else could a dystopia look like? It could look like a lot of different things. Um, it could be beautiful on the outside, but hollow on the inside. This might definitely be the case of an attempt to create a utopia that instead results in a dystopia. It could also look just like the world of today, but people have been brainwashed by a totalitarian government religion or philosophy of equality. Or things have gotten so bad that no one cares. So examples of uh, this type of dystopia are Fahrenheit 451, uh, the Francois Truffaut film, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, an absolutely beautiful film, but it's very cold and sterile. And that sterility is definitely uh, meant to be kind of a dystopian, a dystopian version of the future where people have stopped relating to each other and we've become rather cold and remote. Children of Men, which is the film we're watching today. V for Vendetta, another example with the uh, totalitarian government um, idea. Watchmen, um, both the uh, original comic, the movie, and also the TV series on HBO, if you watch that, where we're uh, two minutes away from midnight on the doomsday clock. And uh, Battle Royale, which is a Japanese film, which was banned in a lot of countries for a while. Um, but you could pretty much say it's like Hunger Games, but good. So this type of dystopia could be referred to as a dystopia of the mind, which means that the dystopia, that chaos, disorder, and everything is really more internalized than externalized. So the film for this week, Children of Men, is from 2007, directed by Alfonso Cuaron. The synopsis, it's 2027 and civilization is on the verge of collapse. No child has been born in 18 years. A weary alcoholic, a young illegal immigrant, and a group of terrorists form an uneasy alliance to try and make a better future. So this is the first mainstream reference to Strawberry Cough. So there's a six plus minute long shot three quarters of the way through this film. So you should look for it. There's a couple more very, very long takes in this film. And um, if you think about the amount of work it takes to do uh, a long take style, especially with what they're doing, we're talking about tanks and fighter planes and blood bags and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy. So our questions for this week. Number one, how is this world different from the world that we live in? And how is it similar? So first think of the ways that it's different and then how is it similar? Number two, why can't women have babies? And why is or was baby Diego important? You're going to hear about baby Diego at the very beginning of this film. Number three, why is Key's baby important, yet problematic? Why is Theo an odd choice for a protector or advocate? And how or why does he change? Number four, what is the human project? And what is it similar to in our world? I'd ask you folks to enjoy this film. Actually, you know, this is a pretty enjoyable film, but it's still a dystopia, so don't expect to feel good at the end of it.